Hey, good afternoon. How are you guys doing? Can you guys hear me all right? Make sure I'll pull up the chat. I really appreciate you guys giving me the time to speak uh, today um, about my story. Um, pretty crazy, uh, interesting story that I have of how I started gaming, actually. Um, when I was a young kid, um, you know, I'd always played video games with my brothers. Um, by the way, my name's David uh, Fernandez. I, I don't know if I introduced myself. Uh, I go by the gamer tag of Riot Shock, and I am a full-time streamer where I stream uh, Halo, and I also compete. Um, so back to the story. Uh, you know, when I was a little kid, I used to play games, and I, I got into a lot of trouble um, growing up. Um, and at 15 years old, I ended up uh, videotaping a high school fight. It wasn't a, a serious fight. Um, it was just the wrong person, wrong time type of thing. Uh, I ended up turning in the tape to the police. The police had um, came to the school. They, they heard about a fight. They heard that I, I videotaped it. They asked me to um, turn in the tape, and I did. And then nine days later, uh, after the, them promising that I would never, you know, be in trouble, uh, nine days later, I had a uh, summons to court where I was being charged as an adult. Um, I never had any prior, like, you know, run in with the law or anything like that. Um, just wrong person. Um, my father believes that they may have had connections with the court, just but we were never able to prove it. So unfortunately, I went right from juvenile court to adult court. Um, we, My bond was set at $200,000. Um, and I you know, was immediately put on house arrest. My parents took a lien on their, their home and, uh, and, and paid for my bond. And I ended up being expelled from the public school, had to go to Christian school. Um, when I was on house arrest, uh, the court ordered that I can't have any contact with anyone. No one outside, no friends, not going outside at all. So my father, you know, being the cool dad he was, he's like, nah, you're gonna be able to hang out with your friends. We'll just do it in a different way. So he, uh, this was before routers were out and they had multiple um, switches uh, for ethernet ports and things like that. Um, so he ran a 40 foot ethernet cable down to the modem where I ended up playing Halo 2 um, online with my friends throughout most of my, you know, uh, teenage life. And I started getting very good at the video game and started competing and eventually um, wanted to, you know, do this full time. So throughout that time period when I was playing video games, there was a lot of depression that was that was coming through and a lot of anxiety because I was going to court, you know, they, they were telling me 18 months is in, in a in a prison and it doesn't get better than that. And we're taking it to trial. Uh, we end up losing trial um, on the charge of accessory to second degree assault, um, where I was sentenced five years uh, in prison, uh, one to serve. Um, and we appealed that uh, decision. We ended up bringing this uh, case all the way up to the United States Supreme Court where they uh, hear the, uh, they like, take a hundred cases and then they'll take like 20 of them. So mine got into like the top hundred, but it never got into the actual um, Supreme Court to be heard. So uh, even though we had won the appeal unanimous decision, the state appealed my appeal and they found a fault with my lawyer's briefing. Um, they did make a law after me, state of Connecticut versus Fernandez, where no juvenile uh, can be transferred to adult court without a due process hearing. Um, unfortunately, that law does not protect me because of the fault in my lawyer's briefing. So I ended up at the age of 21 having to do a year in a level four security prison um, where I ended up seeing horrible things. And even to talk about it sometimes or even to think about it, it, it just it hurts. Because I know a lot of a lot of the sacrifices that my parents made to try and prevent me from being there and when I ended up getting out and um, even that re rehabilitation into society was was hard because for a year I was in a, a instinctual mode as a human being of like 
to self-preservation. Um, so to get out and not, not have to be in that instinctual mode, it, it was really hard. And, and games really helped me out with getting away from that. Um, so I continued to compete in Halo, uh, traveled across all the United States and, and did multiple tournaments, um, even getting the highest placing of fifth. Um, during that time when I got out, I ended up getting married, uh, ended up having a, a child and, um, my felony that I had on my record got pardoned. So I don't have a felony. I ended up working for a major insurance company, one of the biggest insurance companies in the whole United States and actually getting, um, a, a placing within, they have like a stat system. I was ranked number three in the country, uh, for one of the largest insurance companies in the United States. And then about 102 days ago, uh, 103 days ago, roughly around there, is, uh, I remember it. Um, I got really depressed. I had a massive panic attack while I was taking a phone call. And uh, my job put me on a leave of absence and told me that I wasn't able to come back until I had a doctor's note. Um, during that time, I ended up actually um, speaking with Dr. John um, about... All of this, I, I learned about breathing techniques and things, and and I learned that every day is a blessing. And I think we had mentioned it earlier um, with the first uh, speaker about perspective. And I think that that's really what changed the most is my perspective of every day is a, a gift. You know, when I when I was working at the insurance company. I had to be there at seven o'clock and uh, we were working at home because of COVID. I, I would wake up sometimes 6.59, sometimes 7.05. <laughs> I'd just be late. I just was so depressed. So, and then like dreaded the day, dreaded getting up. And now realizing it's like every day is a gift and, and you need to be working towards that passion that you love. And for me, that was video games. For me, that was you know, competing. And uh, I'm happy to say that, you know, I'm taking the biggest risk because I, I truly believe in myself and in this, in this research as well. I, I've also worked hard enough where I can build a 401k, but I mean, I'm, I, my plan is to, to take out of my 401k and become one of the biggest streamers in the world. And now that I, I stream Monday through Friday, nine to three thirty. And, and I wake up at 5.30 in the morning. I can't wait to get up. I'm excited. And and that's something that I, I like to, to share with my stream a lot is like the depression is always there. Anxiety is always there. Um, I've, I've seen horrible things uh, and that's never going to go away. But what helps is video games and competing. And that allows me to be more in the moment. It allows me to test myself too. I think compete. I think everyone should compete at something. Um, and when you compete at something, you have to wipe away the ego and not blame things that caused you to lose or things that may have, have short stopped you. Always look at yourself and understand that if you can work on, on yourself every single day, then nothing's going to stop you. But you also have to be very grateful too. Uh, I mean, I'm very religious. I'm I'm a Christian myself. I do believe that everyone should believe in a, a higher power. Um, but I don't like to force my religion on anyone. I just believe what what I believe. But I do think that you have to understand that something else is in control, and sometimes things won't go your way. But as long as you're preparing yourself and, and working hard and putting in that work every single day and being grateful and getting up and, and being excited to, to live, you can be happy too because you're creating those moments and, and being in the moment. And that's when I decided that um, I actually left that insurance company uh, two days ago. Um, I was on a leave of absence until then and, and I told them that I will not be returning. Um, and I've been streaming for about three months now um, with an insane increase of, of numbers. And and I, I do this for a while. Like I've, I've watched Twitch for a while. I've understood. And and I'm generating numbers that, that aren't normal. Um, 
And I think that's because I love it. I love, I love just getting up. I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm, I'm literally, it's all I think about. And, uh, I want to, I want to share my story to understand, to help people understand that, like, you don't have to be stuck. It, it's almost like I felt like I was stuck. I was like trapped and you don't have to be that way. It, it doesn't have to be that way. You can find a way to be happy by finding your passion and finding a way to monetize it, to make it work for this society that we've built. And that's where I think gaming comes in. Gaming is a huge, huge thing for uh, just the way that we process. It's like doing a Sudoku puzzle. When people do Sudoku puzzles and there's like crossword puzzles, they're doing it and they're, they're working their brain out. But when, when I'm playing a video game and I'm competing, I'm bursting someone else's mind and I have to adjust. It's almost like a fight. Like if you've ever done boxing or, or MMA, you have to adjust to whatever your opponent is. And, and that's where you can test yourself. Um, and that's what I want to share. I want to share that it, there is a way and, and you can. So I appreciate you guys giving me the time to to talk. It was an awesome time to to share this this story it is a little bit emotional for me just because of it's more so emotional for when i think about my parents and how much they gave i just can't wait to give back and It's going to feel the best, you know, it's, it, it's what I want to do. And I think that that's what everyone should, you know, live their day that in the moment and, and give. I, I apologize, by the way, I'm a little sick. I, I just came down with a cold like two days ago. And I'm like, I have to talk at this. I'm like, oh, <laughs> but it was awesome. I thank you guys for, for the, the time and uh, appreciate you guys listening. Hello, everybody. I think you can hear me. Hopefully it won't cut out again. Um, basically, my I have five kids. Um, I was a stay-at-home mom till a few years ago and uh, homeschooled my children. We um, pretty much just enjoyed life, you know, and hung out and stuff. Well, my children started, they were growing older and graduating, and my oldest son my oldest daughter and my middle son have all joined the military, but when my oldest son, he joined the army and was in, he joined at 17 and then very soon after was going to be deployed to Afghanistan. And so, oh gosh, this is so hard because like even right now, you know, this is not a good thing to be talking about right now. And so he was gonna be deployed. And um, so that was rough enough anyway, but he said, um, he wanted to go to, to Best Buy for his day before he left. And so I, I, that's like my idea of torture. I don't like technology, I didn't like technology much. And so we went to this Best Buy and then my son says to me, well, mommy, I, want you, I also want you to try this thing called virtual reality. And I was like, this just sounds so awful. <laughs> like I'm already having to be at Best Buy and now I have to go try a VR thing and so we went inside and I told him that I would go try it because of course I love him and I was going to miss him and I wanted to just spend time with him doing whatever we could together so we went in and I put on this headset and um, honestly I can truthfully say that immediately I thought wow this is like the most amazing thing I've ever seen and so um, I, long story short, we don't, we also didn't use credit cards and things like that. Well, I had one, but it didn't have anything on it. I literally walked out of the store with a headset, sensors, everything I needed to go home and set up VR. Um, my son had a gaming computer, which he had recently built himself. And he was leaving that because of course he was going to Afghanistan. So I went home, started playing VR games and became very involved and interested in the fact that I started um, just learning about gaming, but also I noticed as I played games, I started feeling better. 
So let me back up a second and say, see, I'm all discombobulated because I was muted 50 times. But <laughs> basically, uh, before this, I had had five children and um, I'd had a lot of health problems. So in 2015, I was actually in a wheelchair for a while and um, I have blood clots from my belly button down. So my inferior vena cava, I have three of them because the first two have clotted off. They will never unclot and there is no blood flow there. Um, all my veins below the inferior vena cava have been clotted. So renal veins, iliac veins, um, everything down there, pelvic veins, just all of that. So when my youngest was born, that's how it developed. I told them I was sick, went in, there were problems and complications during the birth and I was in the hospital for the next couple of months near death. Um, the doctors told me I wouldn't make it, but then I ended up having some, it's like chemotherapy and immunotherapy type stuff that was um, experimental at the time. Um, so that was, that was 2000, um, 2003. And then between 2003 and 2017, when my son went to Afghanistan, I experienced multiple episodes of recurring blood clots and it was very difficult to just basically um, live. <laughs> I mean, I was listening to Riot and David that talked a minute ago and thinking how all of us have different struggles and some people have struggles that are a lot worse, but there are times when you really get to the point where you just think, you know, wow, what do I do next? Like, what can I do next when there is nothing to do next? How do you keep going and what do you do? And so I had been, you know, kind of to the point a few times where I'm just like, good grief, you know, you can't, you can't do much in those situations. So in 2017, when I tried VR, I was walking at that point and stuff, okay, but um, it was always still at the back of our minds, you know, I, I definitely have to be careful about that sort of thing. And so I, because I have a lot of pain with the clots and the problems that have, have um, the damage that's been done, the damage to my nerves and things below my waist will never be, never go away. And so um, when I started playing VR, what's really cool, now here's where we get to the cool stuff. What's really, really cool is I noticed that I could play VR and not take as much medication. I didn't hurt as much. I could go longer without needing to rest or just take pain meds and stuff. And so I started trying to extend the time between, between medication sessions and whether that was pain medication or other types of medication I needed to take for um, the blood disorder. And so long story short, by that was in April, I started playing. And by October of that year, I had lost 40 pounds and I was off of most of the medications, almost everything. Um, the weight loss was good because when, um, when I have too much weight on me, like I do right now, actually, it causes a lot of venous congestion and it's very, very painful. So this past winter has not been good to me <laughs> and it makes me hurt a lot whenever I have all that extra um, fat there basically pushing on the veins and stuff. And so that's bad. But anyway, so I was playing games and the one particular game I played a lot was called Echo Arena. And that's a team-based um, sport game. It's really cool because it doesn't involve guns and you have a team that works together. The objective is basically to work the disc uh, through the arena um, avoiding the other team if possible or not letting them get the disc from you and putting that disc in the opponent's goal before they can take it and get it and put it in your goal. So in this game, you can stun people. You can punch them in the head. I enjoy doing that. And I've discovered through the VR that apparently I'm a little bit violent, which is kind of fun. And um, so, but only in VR, I'm not violent in physical reality. And well, maybe I could be, but Anyway, that's a different, that's a different speech. And so um, basically I started playing this game and realized that I'm actually really good at it. And this is one cool thing we've noticed with virtual reality that women seem to take naturally to it. And anybody takes naturally to it, but it's really funny to see how many women and girls and different people just love it. And like with me, here I was an older female, most of the guys in the game or people, cause it was mostly guys, cause we have, you know, large male populations still the games, 
And they actually thought it was a young boy because of my voice. I was like, I'm not a boy, I'm a lady. And so then we played more and they realized that they thought I was a young female because I told them I was a female. And I'm like, no, I'm not young at all, I'm older. And so I can play really well. And we found that with others, like we had somebody who made VR League season three, um, he plays in a wheelchair and I actually play seated. So the funny story about that is when we got ready to go to VR League, my team did well and I made championships and uh, so we got to compete at Oculus Connect 4 and um, I had to ask for a chair because I play seated and they were all shocked because they're like, people don't play VR seated and I'm like, yeah, the people play VR seated and more people would play VR seated if we gave them that opportunity. So that was kind of cool. And um, so basically I started playing, began to feel better and then became involved with the communities quite a bit and encouraging others. Um, my kids uh, are pretty much grown now. My daughter was in the Air Force. My son who was in the army in Afghanistan is now home, which I'm very grateful for. My middle son is in the Army National Guard. He is actually, ironically, it's kind of funny, um, he's actually getting ready to start his job as a manager of a VR entertainment center. And um, then my younger two are busy doing various college and stuff like that. But um, anyway, that's kind of the, the basic story there. There's a bit more of that. I got a little bit off track, I think, but hopefully you guys will have some questions and help us redirect just a little bit. Um, I work with VR communities. Much of what I do has been volunteer. I'm a writer by trade. I've actually written thousands of articles and eight books and I enjoy feedback. <laughs> I don't enjoy feedback. That was not for you all, that was for him. <laughs> but, um, so um, I enjoy promoting people in the community, the gaming community, VR gaming community um, who do positive things. I really promote positive inclusive environments. Um, I was actually chatting with Janelle earlier about the fact that I think one of the things I really push is that we we all have such a great responsibility, but also an honor to be laying the foundation and for for the future. We're literally, you know, helping put the groundwork for what we're going to see in the future. So we can use VR, for example, in gaming for to improve people's mental health, to help promote positive values, to give people core values so that they don't feel so lost and they have a community of people to go to, you know, when they're frightened or sad or need someone or need to heal. You know, there are a lot of people out there that need healing. As Todd mentioned earlier, we have just people that are in pain. And so for me personally, that's why I do this. And um, I just want to be there for others and, and help people. So thank you for having us today. And we hope you have some questions because I haven't seen a whole lot of questions and you guys have to ask us questions. That'll be fun. Thank you, Sonia and Ryan. We'll get the audio set here. We have approximately 30 minutes and I want to open up um, and I want to hear the specifics from Sonia and Dave and others in the audience, um, if you were to design the program for, in terms of reaching out and connecting with, uh, with young people and with veterans, um, I'm really interested in your thoughts as to our next best steps in terms of this this process. Where where do you uh, continue to build? I know uh, David wants to talk a little bit about your, uh, your Discord channel and the community that you're building um, to move forward in, our in terms of that historical development. Stand by. Okay. We're back. Let us know if you can hear uh, hear the audio as we move forward. Thank you, Philip. Okay. Excellent. Great. So, David, Sonia, um, specifically from the two of you, as we as we move forward in terms of the community building um, and the creation of the connection. So, David, I'm going to pass it over to you. 
the audio is, is echoing. Um, I know just in our efforts. Um, okay, I couldn't, I couldn't hear what you were saying. What were you saying? That we've heard. Um, it's know, only echoing when she unmutes. That's we're it. saving folks from there. So I'll turn it over to you to sort of talk about your channel and, and what you've seen as you've gone out with your message. Um, so with, with my channel, uh, I, I've been promoting a lot of positivity. Um, I've in the gaming world, when we grew up, um, when I was younger, it was a lot of talking trash to each other and <laughs> being very aggressive. And, uh, that still is lingering today. There's, um, a lot of, of things that are just, you know, people are just angry. Uh, and I think that I promote to just be more positive. And I, I call out uh, the angry because I mean, realistically, you know, what if, what if that person had a bad day at work and they're, they're stressed and depressed like I was. And then all, all the only way that I can just like get away from the reality of like having to do the Monday through Friday, like grind and have to listen to the passive aggressive, you know, management staff and stuff like that. And it's just like, Oh, if you don't get your numbers up, you'll lose your job. That, that all that stuff. And you just want to get away from it and just play a video game and just and get away from the reality of, of where you were. And if anyone ever, um, you know, is being aggressive or anything like that um, online, I, I usually always call it out and just be like, you know, what's wrong? What, what are you going through? You know, you want to join up? Like, I invite them. I invite them in and, and, and try and, and just be nice to them. And, and what are they going to do? Make fun of me? Like, I, I make fun of me better than me. So I, I'm very open in just being myself. Um, and I think that um, with my community, I think that that's why people uh, like me and, and, and come attracted towards me uh, to my stream uh, is because I'm real and because of who I am and, and what I promote. Uh, I think that that is the biggest thing um, that we have to do is, as people too. It's not even just gamers. It's, it's just... People go into a Wawa if, if you're not holding the door and say, have a great weekend, you know, like, I think we're just on an autopilot mode as a society. And um, when it when we really take a second to, to step back, everyone is equal. You know, I, I like to use, um, when I talk to my stream, I, I use Conor McGregor a lot because that man went from social welfare to everything. And the reality of it is, if if you were to say, if Conor McGregor were to be right next to me right now, if me and him were to fight, he's he's gonna he's gonna kick the living crap out of me. I'm gonna lose so bad. But if we're about to go on Halo and I'm gonna verse him in a one v one, he's getting 15 0 flat easy. And that's because we're all equal as humans. The difference is is what he put into his passion and what I put into my passion. You know what work I'm putting in, and that's where confidence is coming from. The the um, how prepared you are. Now, I'm I'm confident to say that I'm one of the best Halo players in the world. And the reason why that confidence is there is because I've been playing that game for like 15, 16 years. Like, it's, it's the preparedness. And I think that this is the perfect time for me to use my story and promote um, the positivity. And, and I do think that I'm going to change lives. I've envisioned that I'm going to change lives. I've, I even... I see something bigger than just video games for me. I see something bigger than Conor McGregor. I, I see bigger, like that's every day I take the time. I wake up early to just breathe, envision the good things that are gonna happen ahead for the day. Even even on Thursday, even in the struggle. The, yes, or Thursday, I played terrible on stream. I, I missed every shot, I lost every game. I'm coughing up a lung, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling well. And uh, even then, I'm still, like, saying on stream, I'm grateful. I'm grateful even though I'm grateful to struggle today because, you know what, these days are going to remind me to enjoy the good days when they do come and to really be in the moment. And I think that that's what I share to my my viewers a lot, and hopefully I'm able to, to share that with you guys as well. By the way, if you guys want to follow me, I stream Monday through Friday, 9 to 3.30 Eastern Time, uh, it's just twitch.tv slash riot shock. My socials, uh, twitter.com slash riot shock TTV and facebook.com slash riot shock. Um, if any of you guys want to follow and YouTube, of course, you can just type in riot shock halo. Uh, I do a lot of things other than just playing video games. We have these talks we, and I'm going to be doing a podcast as well. 
um, with Alpha Dog Esports, which is a organization that wants to um, just talk about this type of thing. And we also talk about competitive, uh, how to how to be in that mind state. So if anyone ever wants to, to join in, hop in or, or share it to your friends and family, I'd appreciate it. And we're going to have a good time. Thank you, David. And uh, Sonia, you, as Lorraine has pointed out, I mean, you're doing incredibly incredible work building communities um, within the VR space. And so I'd like for you to sort of take some time and sort of explain to our audience um, what you're doing with VR community builders and the standards that you're establishing for the new ethos of gaming. Thanks, Davey. So basically, we have seen some of the fantastic things that come out of gaming, such as teamwork and leadership, critical thinking skills. There's so many really great things that come from gaming and especially team team esports because you're having to work together for a common goal, which is really fantastic. We see those same things with VR gaming. And so it's very exciting to see just the, the potential for people to use those critical live type skills and, and apply them in, in physical reality, what I call physical reality, because you want to see young people be able to, you know, feel confident and know that if there's a problem, they can solve it. That if there's someone around that they don't necessarily like, that they can learn to work with them and collaborate or, or um, potentially compromise, just whatever the situation requires, they learn a lot of those skills in gaming. With VR, there are some unique challenges, but there are also some unique benefits. So specifically with the challenges, as, as David mentioned, we do have a history of toxicity in gaming that has been widely accepted by a lot of people. And unfortunately, um, that seems to be the mantra. You hear it a lot. So I'm glad that he and others like him are trying to change that. Um, you know, there's something to be said for like kind of trash talking a little bit or picking on your your neighbor, so to speak. You know, I think if any of us, any of you had siblings, I definitely know I used to do that to my brother a little bit. And so um, that's normal. But when you start attacking a person's a person's being, their very essence, that's a problem. And that's a lot of what we see when we see the toxicity. You know, it's not like what David just said, oh yeah, you, I can I can beat you because I'm better. That's great, you know, that's awesome. I'll tell anybody that about Echo, come on, I'll take you on. <laughs> but the funny thing is, you know, that that's good. But when you start saying things about someone's race or gender or age or, or where they live, where they're from, what language they speak, um, those are all very, very bad things and it's just not necessary. When you play games, I always encourage people to remember the human behind the headset. So there is a real person behind that headset. And it's even more pertinent and relevant with VR, I think. I mean, it has been with, with traditional gaming as well, but people have largely ignored it. And I was actually talking with Janelle about this earlier. You can, to a degree, um, ignore, like if someone's bad mouthing or being toxic or using racist comments, for example, or um, sexist comments in a chat or something, you can block them, you can mute them, you can hopefully somebody else will remove them from that scenario. Those are all possibilities. When you're in a VR environment, it is, it is like physical reality, except it's immersive reality, but it's as if you're really there. And so for those of you who maybe haven't tried VR, it's essential that you try it and experience it so that you can have a, a knowledgeable opinion on these matters. So that's the reason I'm here introducing VR to a lot of people who've never tried it because they need to understand that it feels as if the person's really there. So when someone is doing things to you or saying things to you, it's like a, a person in physical reality doing that to you. So I always try to give the grocery store example. If you aren't going to do it on aisle 10 in the grocery store, you shouldn't be doing that in VR. And that's the standard we should set for, for social environments in immersive reality. So for example, if you're in the grocery store and you're on aisle 10, you probably wouldn't walk up to somebody, hopefully, and start calling them, you know, these horrid names or humping their face or doing any of those kind of things. If you um, maybe want to go hang out with your friends at a local bar or a strip club or whatever, then maybe you can do those things and it's perfectly fine. There are those types of environments in VR too, but we don't want those in social environments. 
or in team esports because we want to cultivate an, a, a community of esports where you have you're able for kids to see the examples others are setting and also so that kids can participate in esports and be able to actually gain something positive from that. So we definitely need to be setting the standard that we need teamwork, good sportsmanship, communication, and communication needs to be accurate, positive communication. But these things need to be treated as traditional sports. So we, I very much don't accept any sort of excuses where people say, oh, it's the internet, let's just get over it or let them do whatever they want. Um, no, I mean, that's totally insane. Why would you do that? And so, you know, we have the opportunity here to lay a really good foundation for what we could have in terms of competitions. And I mean, for me personally, I see the future of VR gaming and esports as something that can not only appeal to something young people like, which is the technology, we have the sport aspect because, you know, it's just fun to move around and compete. But you also have the very important factor of physicality. So with VR, you have all the wonderful components of traditional esports, but you also have physicality. So that's something that's really essential. And I think it's great to be able to be here and present that to some people and help integrate that into our overall wellness being, you know, the mind, the body, the spirit, everything. It all works together. So glad to chat about that with you guys. And what do you recommend each of you at this point in time? Like, where do you recommend as the spaces where our children can go and learn to play? You I think they're the recommendations that you have for our, our audience. If they have, you know, say a younger, um, let's say. Well, I, I had some points too. I, I want to, I want to touch up on Where do that. they go to learn the, the healthy fundamentals of gaming? I think it's, I think we're creating it. I mean, that's real. The reality of it is, is that it, it it's not prominent in this society now. And streamers like me, streamers like uh, Godku, uh, and and I don't know if Sonia streams, but she probably should. Uh, she's a good entertainer, and uh, that's that's the thing is that um, she's just herself, and she's comfortable being herself. And I think that that's the biggest part is like with gaming. I wanted to touch on Sonia's uh, point of, of trash talk. Um, in competitive aspects of it, trash talk should only be about the game in the game. And when the game is done, you have to understand that person sacrificed their time and you have to respect that they, they put in time and work and, and that means something to them. And how would you feel if you, you, had, you had lost? I mean, you work hard to win, but still be respectful, good game at the end and 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 things like that. Um, but realistically, to to make your point as well, um, I wanted to comment for Liz about the fundamental of sportsmanship as well. I think that it, it's because we don't we're not respecting the other person as a human being, like understanding that and that honestly is the reason why ego is there, and that's the reason why people don't learn faster or get better faster is because they they have the the blame game they blame everything else except themselves and and that's the reality of it is is that once you wipe away that ego and you look at the reason why you're at fault that's how you get better and that's how you get better faster and, and that's how you're going to overcome a lot more um i think specifically competing in halo has helped me in the outside world when I was the, the insurance agent, you know, that was a, almost a killer be killed, like an instinctual feeling to get more sales, more, more sales, more sales, more sales. And that's the exact same feeling that I have when I compete. It's the, the rush of, uh, it, it was funny. I was watching the diagrams from, I, I think her name's Laura. I'm sorry if I, the first speaker, um, how she was talking about the, the exo stress, um, how it's ramping up. That's how, what I feel when I'm like getting ready for the, I think it's eustress is what she called it, eustress. Um, when it ramps up before it becomes distress. That's what I feel when I'm competing. When Like I, I get up to that point and then I stay there. It's, it was awesome. Um, so I think that that's really what it is, is that we're paving the way for, for the new generation and we just need to have more people like us. We need to have more exposure uh, 
to this side of things and and the science and studies are showing it and that's only going to further us that's why i know it's i know this is the future it, like I, <laughs> I can't like that i just see it too much it's too clear are you ready okay um okay so if any of you noticed i'm kind of laughing david's actually virtual for this he's at home joint and work some of us are live here and you know you, you just have issues it's it's just the the year and a half of issues and so um we're sitting here in a conference room and there have been you know some noises today but literally while he was talking it was just like a parade in the hall and there's this tower of balloons like 20 feet tall <laughs> going by the door so you know it's just spectacular you just gotta love life sometimes and laugh that's what I do with games. So you guys, here's the thing. Whether you're 10 years old or 20 years old or, you know, 40 years old or 80 years old, it doesn't matter. We have lost our ability to have fun and laugh, laugh at ourselves and just, you know, like Janelle and I were talking about this earlier, just breathe and relax. So gaming led me in 2019, I spent about seven months traveling around the world I went to England, Switzerland, China, promoting VR gaming and letting people try headsets. And I had the joy of playing on a lake in Switzerland, a train station in London, you know, somewhere in China. I don't know where I was. I was totally lost. And uh, so, you know, very cool things. But um, when I came home, I have, I'm going to share this part of the story real quick. Is that okay, John? Yeah. When I came home, I didn't do it earlier because I didn't have my napkins. I got to get my napkins ready. I might cry. And um, I, my husband just has never paid much attention to me. And he has not shown much interest at all. And so um, basically, I told him, I'm like, man, I um, really want to, you know, like have time together, spend time together, talk, have sex, you know, all that good stuff. And he was like totally, completely just just made it clear he's not interested in anything and so long story short that was December 2019 so I set us a therapy appointment for late January 2020 went to CES in 2020 came home went to the therapist and he told the therapist I have no interest in her whatsoever I don't even like her but she can stay at our house and take care of it our youngest daughter was getting ready to turn 18. So obviously this was a decision long in the making, planning for that moment. Um, we had been married 26 years and basically two weeks later, well, a week later, my van broke of 20 years. I had no transportation and the next week the pandemic hit. So last year for me wasn't really the best year. And, um, you know, people were talking about the pandemic and stuff, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> what pandemic? You know, I can't even focus on anything. I sat on the couch until May, pretty much just sat there. And then I realized I wasn't living, I wasn't doing anything I normally did. And one thing I had stopped doing was playing. And I thought, you know, I have to get out of this because I'm not going to let this one person ruin my life because I'm a happy person and I love living and so I just still though had so much anger and David that's this what made me think about this a minute ago I thought man I just need to play games I need to go play with my friends and just have some fun so I put on my headset and I went to play and I played the game I normally play, which I really usually enjoy a lot, but it's a, you know, I said, I usually get a little violent in it, but it's with a good spirit. So if somebody really is getting upset or something, I'll stop. But I didn't. I just really didn't care. I just wanted to hit somebody. Like I just really, really wanted to like hurt someone. <laughs> and so I played games for a couple of hours and just took out all my anger and frustration and then I took off the headset and just cried for a really long time because I felt so bad. Like, you know, that's not me. That's not who I want to be. And I told my husband, I, 
talked to him a day or two later and I said, you know, I just can't do this anymore because I'm just here and this isn't right. So long story short, he was like, well, I mean, what do you want me to do about it? And so I moved last summer. I spent most of the summer homeless. And then I got a trailer from a friend that had no floors. And most of my, many of my VR friends know this, but I basically spent the summer in a trailer with no floors, no toilets. I went to the bathroom outside, but I had power and internet. So I could play VR and I could write articles. <laughs> and so um, that's what I did last summer and fall. And um, now I'm here in this great hotel with water bottles, no apples back there, but there are water bottles and um, it's fantastic. And I do write for VR Fitness Insider, who put that up there, John? And right now we're, I'm paused on that for just a second. There's a reason, but it's coming back. And I started VR Community Builders, I do that. But basically, I don't talk about myself a lot, John, you know that, because I'm not here to promote me. I just want to say with VR gaming, if it hadn't been for my VR friends last year, um, I honestly don't know what I would be doing right now because gaming friends can be like family and they are like a family in a way. And that's what people need to realize. It makes a huge difference. And we have the opportunity to create things that will provide that sort of atmosphere for others doesn't matter what age you are or what situation you're in. Everybody needs to know that somebody out there cares that they exist and that they're alive and that they're going to be here tomorrow. Because if other people in your life are saying to you, I really don't care, then you need somebody who says they do. So I think that gaming can actually provide that in a way that um, a lot of people just don't realize it's it's very important. And so I can tell you clinically, you know, since I found VR Fitness Insider and when I reached out to you not too many months ago, um, the impact that you have had and the difference that you've made um, through your articles and, and in people's lives uh, have been tremendous. Uh, and so I encourage everyone sort of in the audience, um, please, please check out Sonia's articles, um, VR Fitness Insider. Um, other articles, reach out to her um, as she works with us to build um, build the warrior gamer community. So Sonia, thanks for all you do. David, thanks for, for all you do. Uh, and now